I'm, I'm very pleased to welcome um, Dr. Pramila Crivelli of Asian Development Bank here to talk with us about Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. So Dr. Crivelli, um, it seems that our CEP, as we call it in short, is very topical at the moment. Why is this the case? Can you give us a brief explanation about it? Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, the RCEP is a regional trade agreement or regional integration agreement. Um, it is very topical at the moment uh, because it's uh, the second uh, mega regional in the region after the CPTPP. We mean mega regional uh, because um, of its wide geographical coverage. It's an agreement partnering 15 economies, the 10 uh, countries of ASEAN, uh, together with uh, the People's Republic of China, PRC, uh, the Republic of Korea, uh, Japan, Australia and New Zealand. So it's a very large agreement. Actually, it is uh, the first in terms of population and GDP of all the members together. And uh, it came after eight years of lengthy negotiations. And so it was signed last year in November. Uh, and it was an historic milestone towards um, more um, deeper regional economic uh, integration in the region. And many potential benefits are expected uh, out of RCEP. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, some observers are also qualified the agreement as shallow, simply because uh, it encompasses many different provisions and many different chapters but sometimes the depth of the commitments might not be uh, as you know, as uh, high as uh, expected. So uh, we have these uh, paradoxal views on our SAP that it, it can generate a lot of benefits, mm -hmm. but uh, it needs further, you know, further assessment and research to really understand the potential, potential and allows economy to unlock its, um, its benefits. Now I'm glad to welcome our, our next speaker from the private sector's point of view, Mr. Uh, Pier Paolo Getty. Um, Mr. Pierre, uh, Mr. Getty, it seems that the RCEP has a strong commitment towards open trade and regional integration. What is the perspective of the business community of RCEP? Um, are they enthusiastic about it? Do you expect that the companies will use RCEP? Uh, th this is honestly a pretty challenging question because uh, it's not easy to have, a, have the full picture of the industry. What I can say is that uh, businesses are, tend to be cautious at the moment. They want really to understand what the potential duty benefits will be uh, and what the cost to implement the systems and, and get these duty benefits will be. Because uh, in the end, uh, a company is normally profit driven. No? So you need to compare uh, the benefit you have with the cost you, you're going to incur. And then, so the, these are the um, elements. Another thing I wanted to, to tell, to mention, is that um, uh, the margins, the duty preference and the margins uh, change a lot depending on the industry, on the sector. For example, a 5% duty uh, preference in the fashion industry is, has a limited impact because there you have high margins. The same percentage in raw materials, for example, is, is, a, is a massive duty reduction. Um, then the, the last point I want, I want to, to mention is that uh, there's uh, also the appetite for risk, which is a point. So uh, are we sure that we, we are not going to receive a challenge from the customs authorities? Uh, shall we wait for a critical mass to start and apply the preference and wait and see what happens? Uh, so the other element I would add to the, to the, to, to the combination to the, is that um, we need a predictable uh, environment and we need to make sure that all the customs authorities uh, in the area apply the same criteria um, in terms of controls, in terms of documentary requirements. That's the only way a business can safely implement some processes to get these duty benefits. It is often mentioned that the ben major benefit of the RCEP is its rules of origin. Um, is this really a game changer, Dr. Crivelli? Can you give us a little bit of idea uh, what is the rules of origin of RCEP? 
Well, in fact, yes, uh, this is uh, one of the major benefits, or at least what you hear the most, is that in terms of uh, trade liberalization for trading goods, uh, routes of origins uh, may be a game changer because um, the, you will have a common set of rules for, as I mentioned earlier, this is a mega regional agreement, so for 15 economies, it's going to be uh, the first time that they share the same rules. Um, at, the, uh, at the same time, because of the wide geographical coverage, these uh, rules of origins would allow accumulation uh, of originating materials to benefit from uh, preferential treatment when goods are exported within the region. So uh, this is why, uh, in terms of trade liberalization and traded goods, uh, rules of origins are expected to be uh, a game changer. However, I must say that at the Asian Development Bank, we are now uh, conducting a uh, wide project on RCEP, on, on regional trade agreements in general, to raise the benefits of regional trade agreements with a focus on RCEP. And uh, so we have conducted a preliminary analysis on the rules of origin, and they, their potential benefit is quite high, but some limitations have also been observed based on the legal text uh, of the agreement and comparing with uh, other agreements such as the CPTPP or the ATIGA, the ASEAN Trade um, in Goods uh, Agreement. So let me mention a few of them. So as mentioned by um, Mr. Getty earlier, the duty benefits and the costs are the major drivers for the private sectors to use uh, um, trade agreements. In the case of RCEP, what we find is that despite there is a, a scope for preferential margins because uh, MFN tariffs are quite high uh, in the region, um, the tariff phasing down in, in our SAP is quite complex and very long, long sometimes because it can take up to 20 years or even more to liberalize. In addition, you have tariff differential provisions. So you have in total 38 tariff schedules that had to be analyzed and even some ASEAN countries make differentiated offers to other ASEAN members. So it is quite surprising. But why is it so? Well, because sometimes when you do not have tariff benefits, it can happen that for some goods you don't have tariff benefits from RCEP, you still have the accumulation possibilities. So that might be the reason. Now, in terms of accumulation of origin, we need to mention, and it has, um, I, I think the, uh, Mr. Gary can also provide additional comments uh, about that, but uh, in, in RCEP you have diagonal accumulations. Diagonal, uh, so accumulation of originating materials, but not of working and processing operations. So not full accumulation is also limiting the benefits. Finally, with differentiated offers, accumulation is sometimes uh, conditional, conditional on additional provisions in the agreements that are uh, sometimes quite restrictive. For example, if you are in Cambodia, you want to export a car to um, Vietnam, importing parts or gears from Japan, then we will have to benefit from accumulation and count as originating the gears from Japan, you will need to have a 20% value added out of the FOB price completely created in Cambodia. And in such industry, it might be quite challenging to, to meet such requirements. Then you have proof of origins. Uh, the proof of origins in RCEP uh, still relies on the uh, certificate of origin with flexibilities but this is also quite complex for the private sector because best practices would push for self-certification and it is not provided in RCEP. You have also proof of direct consignment, you have really to prove it, it's not assumed automatically like the non-alteration principle, so it's not there as a best practice neither and it is not in the CPTPP either. Uh, and lastly, the restrictiveness, we analyze the restrictiveness of rules of origin, like 5,000 rules and it seems, on average, we cannot really see that they are clearly more lenient, although we need more uh, sectoral analysis to answer that. Thank you very much for your answer. Um, Mr. Getty, do you agree with the analysis? Has the business community, Deloitte, or some specific companies already analyzed the content and the potential benefits of RCEP? Uh, I, I agree with the analysis. It's a very technical topic. And again, it's not only about the, let's say, product-specific rule of origin. It's uh, an holistic view on all the provisions that, uh, that are contained in, uh, that are covered uh, by the, the agreement. So you have documentary requirements, certificates, 
direct transportation, all the things that, that, that uh, we as a, a subject matter expert know very well. Um, what, what, a, a, an important point uh, uh, regarding RCEP is the possibility to accumulate, so to leverage from uh, uh, materials originating in different countries in the area, and for example, China, uh, which can be a, a, an important addition to the uh, previous agreements in place in, uh, in, in the area. Uh, a point uh, Pramila was mentioning before, and to me is very important, not only to me, but to, to the industries involved in business in the area, um, is that accumulation is, not, is currently not full. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a provision for full accumulation, but it's not applicable at the moment. So not having full accumulation doesn't allow you for the flexibility that is normally needed for a business to, 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 to plan and to have a, a regional supply chain, a regional value chain. Mr. Gatti, what does the private sector need uh, to make the full use of RCEP? Um, what kind of research and or capacity building activities that the international and regional partners can do? Um, so the question is essentially how the uh, public sector and international organization can support the private sector in making full use of the, of the agreement and exactly. benefit completely yeah. of the agreement. Um, it depends on, on, the, on the industry and on the size and complexity of the, of the company involved in the trade. For SMEs, for, for small and medium enterprises, I would say that creating awareness is crucial. Uh, so maybe just letting them know that the agreement exists and what the content of the agreement is and how it needs to be interpreted. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, uh, that's essentially it. While for multi multinational entities, you look at uh, uh, other things. They know that the agreement exists, mm -hmm. they analyze the agreement, uh, they made their uh, cost-benefit analysis mm -hmm. on the agreement, but they are looking for something that is fully predictable and that can be translated into automated processes. That, that, that's, uh, that's the point in my view. And in general terms, and this is applicable to SMEs and to multinational entities, uh, the, the key element is simplification. Mm -hmm. So let me, example given, let's say, uh, if it takes two days to obtain a certificate of origin, these two days are two days of transit time that you lose to deliver your goods to your, uh, to your customer or to your local entity abroad. Uh, and this is a huge cost for, uh, for the company. Simplification means, for example, self declaring uh, preferential origin in, in your commercial documents. And this is just an example. Uh, there is plenty of situation where you need a simplification to, to, to help this, uh, uh, to get the full benefit of the agreement. Okay. Thank you very much for that wonderful answer. It gives a really uh, good perspective on what the international and the regional communities can do. Thank you. And now we go to the final question, and now we go back to Dr. Crivelli. Um, what are the next steps uh, for RCEP implementation, and what is the role of Asian Development Bank in these next steps? Thank you. So um, first of all, as I mentioned, in, in ADB, we really value trade uh, integration, and we support RCEP uh, and RCEP efforts for, um, for, uh, to, towards more uh, cooperation and integration in the region. So um, we, uh, in terms of routes of origin, uh, we conducted, so I mentioned already the analysis. What we find is also uh, some convergence in the routes of origin. And this is something I want to mention because for next step, it's quite important. In RCEP, we have, there is a building, built in agenda. Mm -hmm. RCEP is a living agreement. So what we have now as an agreement will evolve and can get better and better over time. So I think the role of ADB and uh, international partners is also to support member economies, policy makers, you know, to, to further develop uh, RCEP and support the building agenda and support the implementations towards, um, you know, better rules of origin in this case. And this exercise on uh, convergence is quite important because wherever we identify convergence in the product specific rules of origins, 
What do we mean by convergence? Simply, you may have different rules written in different ways. You may say a live animal needs to be wholly obtained. Another rule says a live animal needs to a change of chapter, but the substantive requirement is exactly the same. So maybe there is scope for simplification and have the same rule at the end or something similar. So we'll support this by conducting further analysis, further uh, research. Hopefully also uh, next year we'll have um, some capacity building. We will support the awareness uh, exercise, also um, awareness building, as mentioned by um, Mr. Getty, that is extremely important, not only for policymaker, but also among uh, the business uh, community mm -hmm. so that they get aware of, of our SEP. And I would like to also to finish by saying that uh, early next year, the ADB will publish um, a report, a full report on RCEP, not only on rules of origin, but on the whole text of the agreement, which mm -hmm. is going to be a preliminary analysis to support, uh, you know, the policymakers and uh, private sector to better understand the, the possibilities and, and potential uh, opportunities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the answer. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, Dr. Pramila Carvelli and Mr. Pier Paolo Getty for, having, uh, for being here and for answering, answering all my questions about Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Thank you very much.